Welcome to this Tropical Medicine module on Chagas disease. In this module, we will discuss the pathogenesis, epidemiology, and transmission of Chagas disease. We will then discuss the clinical manifestations of this disease and tests available for its diagnosis. Finally, we will present treatment options and preventative strategies. Let's start with a few questions to get you thinking about Chagas disease. We will review these questions at the end of the module to give you a chance to apply the knowledge you have gained. Question number one. What is the organism responsible for Chagas disease? Question number two. What is the insect vector for Chagas disease? Question number three. What does Romana's sign describe? Question number four. What is a Chagoma? Question number five. What percentage of adults will progress to have chronic symptomatic Chagas disease? Question number six. What are the main organ systems affected by chronic Chagas disease? Question number seven. How is Chagas disease usually diagnosed? Question number eight. What medications are used to treat acute infection? Question number nine. What medication is used to treat chronic infection? And finally, question number 10. What percentage of newborns to mothers with Chagas disease will contract it? Let's move on to a brief history lesson. This disease was first described by Carlos Chagas, a prominent Brazilian physician and epidemiologist in 1909, though it was not recognized as a major human disease until the 1960s. Chagas discovered that within the intestines of the Roduvidae family of predatory insects lived a protozoan, a new species of the Trypanosoma genus, which he named Trypanosoma cruzi. Chagas disease is caused by this parasite, Trypanosoma cruzi, and is primarily endemic in rural parts of Central and South America. Because of immigration, the geographic distribution of the disease has spread from Latin America to regions of North America and Europe as well. It is estimated that 11 million people are infected with this parasite. Annually, there are roughly 40,000 new cases diagnosed in endemic countries and 15,000 infants born with congenital Chagas disease. Generally, congenital Chagas disease is asymptomatic, but may present with nonspecific signs and symptoms, namely anemia, hepatosplenomegaly, meningoencephalitis, or respiratory distress. The rates of cardiac and gastrointestinal complications are similar to that of individuals infected later in life, as will be discussed shortly. Trypanosoma cruzi is a protozoan parasite that is most commonly transmitted by its insect vector, the verduvid, or, quote, kissing bug. Other modes of transmission include vertical and iatrogenic, via organ transplant or transfusion with infected blood products. Vertical transmission is estimated to occur in 1 to 12 percent of infected pregnant women in Latin America. The life cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi is summarized here. In the first step, the insect vector verduvid takes a blood meal from either humans or armadillos and releases tripomastigotes in its feces near the bite. The tripomastigotes enter through the wound or nearby mucosal membrane. In the second step, the tripomastigotes then invade intracellularly within the adjacent tissue. Once inside, the tripomastigotes transform into amastigotes, which multiply by binary fission. Eventually, amastigotes differentiate back into tripomastigotes and are released into the bloodstream, leading to invasion of new sites via hematogenous spread. During this time period, uninfected insect vectors may become infected by ingesting tripomastigotes during a blood meal. Once this occurs, the parasites migrate and multiply in the midgut of the vector before making their way to the hindgut in preparation for release. Chagas disease has two phases, acute and chronic. 
Acute infection generally presents with symptoms of fever, non-pruritic macular rash localized to the trunk, and facial edema. Romana sign is a characteristic lesion of Chagas disease and involves unilateral periorbital edema that develops two to four weeks after infection and persists typically for two months. Chagoma, another characteristic lesion of Chagas disease, is an inflammatory nodule that occurs at the bite site of the host. In rare cases, the acute infection can cause hepatosplenomegaly, cardiac dysrhythmia, and or meningoencephalitis. CNS involvement in pediatric patients is fatal in about 10% of cases. Approximately 30% of infected adults will go on to develop chronic infection due to inadequate immune response. Of those with chronic infection, about 20 to 30 percent of infected patients will develop cardiac manifestations. These include dilated cardiomyopathy, valvular disease, ventricular aneurysms, arrhythmias, thromboembolism, and sudden cardiac death. The staging of cardiac involvement is based on ejection fraction, or EF, and clinical signs of heart failure, as we will outline now. Stage A will have a normal echo with no clinical signs of heart failure. Stage B1 will have an EF greater than 45%, also with no clinical signs of heart failure. Stage 2B will have an EF less than 45%, and again with no clinical signs of heart failure. Stage C is characterized by abnormal echo findings with compensated heart failure. Finally, stage D is characterized by abnormal echo findings with refractory heart failure. Here are two examples of the dilated cardiomyopathy seen in Chagas disease on gross pathology and also on MRI. Chronic infection with Chagas disease may also lead to GI involvement of both the upper and lower tracts in approximately 10 to 15 percent of patients. Upper GI disease typically presents with esophagitis and megaesophagus, resulting in regurgitation and dysphagia, while lower GI disease may cause large bowel obstruction and megacolon with constipation and abdominal pain. This image depicts a gross specimen of megacolon. This next image represents megaesophagus on x-ray and barium swallow. Both megacolon and megaesophagus are seen in Chagas disease. Chagas disease is diagnosed mainly via serologic testing with anti-Trypanosoma cruzi IgG. The sensitivity and specificity of serologic testing ranges from 81.7 to 100% and 100% respectively. Other available diagnostic methodologies include wet mount or GAMSA stained blood smears, CSF smears, and PCR. The sensitivity and specificity of PCR ranges from 33.3% to 96.5% and 100% respectively. If cardiac involvement is suspected, an EKG and echocardiogram should be performed to evaluate for arrhythmias and dilated cardiomyopathy. In the event that GI involvement is suspected, a barium swallow and enema can identify the presence of megaesophagus and megacolon, respectively. Let's move on to treatment strategies. Acute infection and congenital disease are medically managed with either benznidazole for 60 days or nitrofuramox for 90 days. Dosing guidelines for benznidazole are as follows. For children less than 12 years old, 5 to 7.5 mg per kg per day orally in two divided doses for 60 days. For children 12 years or older, the dosing is 5 to 7 mg per kg per day, orally in two divided doses for 60 days. The dosing guidelines for nitrofuramox are as follows. For children less than or equal to 10 years, the dose is 10 to 20, oops. For children less than or equal to 10 years of age, 
the dosing is 15 to 20 mg per kg per day orally in three or four divided doses for 90 days. For children aged 11 to 16 years, the dosing is 12.5 to 15 mg per kg per day orally in three or four divided doses for 90 days. For anyone aged 17 and older, the dose is 8 to 10 mg per kg per day orally in three or four divided doses for 90 days. Both of these agents are generally effective at eliminating the disease. They must be obtained through the CDC for use in the United States and should be avoided in patients with severe renal or hepatic dysfunction. There are few clinical trials to guide treatment of chronic infection with the use of antitrypanosomal agents, though most would favor treatment of all children 18 years or younger. In adults, the pros of treatment must be weighed with the cons of drug toxicity in older adults, given the higher rate of side effects in this patient population. Benznidazole is the main agent used for treatment of chronic infection and has shown some efficacy in early cardiomyopathy. Nitrofuramox is not indicated in chronic infection. This was confirmed in a 2008 study that found that patients with chronic and intermediate phase disease treated with nitrofuranox alone had a cure rate of less than 3%. Invasive procedures may be necessary to correct complications of chronic infection, including pacemaker placement for bradyarrhythmias and surgery for megaesophagus and megacolon. Several large-scale programs in Latin America have had success in decreasing the disease burden of Chagas disease. These interventions include limiting exposure to insect vectors, namely via housing improvements, and use of insecticides and nets. In addition, screening blood products has decreased the risk of iatrogenic transmission. It's time to go back over our questions from the beginning of the module. Question number one, what is the organism responsible for Chagas disease? The answer is Trypanosoma cruzi. Question number two, what is the insect vector for Chagas disease? The answer, the Roduviid or kissing bug. Question number three, what does Romana's sign describe? The answer is unilateral periorbital edema. Question four, what is a shagoma? A shagoma is an inflammatory nodule that occurs at the bite site of the host. Question number five. What percentage of adults will progress to have chronic symptomatic Chagas disease? The answer is 30%. Question number six. What are the main organ systems affected by chronic Chagas disease? The answer is cardiac and gastrointestinal. Question number seven. How is Chagas disease usually diagnosed? This is through anti-Trypanosoma cruzi IgG. Question number eight. What medications are used to treat acute infection? The answer, benznidazole and nitrofuramox. Question number nine. What medication is used to treat chronic infection? The answer here is benznidazole. And finally, question number 10. What percentage of newborns to mothers with Chagas disease will contract the disease? The answer is up to 12%. This concludes our module on Chagas disease. Thank you for your attention.